Hey, hi. Um, no background today. I don't know. They just must have forgotten to put the poster up. Uh, Blue Beetle is the subject for today, and you know, for some reason, I don't know what, what, what happened. No poster. Still got the Honda Mansion over there. You got Gran Turismo, Oppenheimer, and Ninja Turtles, and uh, down that way there's still the Meg 2, but no Blue Beetle. So it's almost as if someone doesn't have much faith in this movie, uh, and I don't know why because the trailers really look good. I really like the way they looked, and you know it's a DC property, so I, I'd imagine there would be a bit more uh, marketing for it, but whatever. So yeah, I'm gonna see it and see if it uh, it lives up to the promises of the trailers, and uh, tell you what I think about it when I come out of it. So, uh, see you then. Okay, so, coming out the other side of the Blue Beetle movie. Blue Beetle is a movie that exists now. Finally, we get a Blue Beetle movie after talking about it for who knows how long. Uh, yeah, this movie's been in development for a very many, many, many years, and now it's finally out. What do I think about it? Well, I'll say this. The first half of the movie is very rough and not in the good way it's incredibly rushed it doesn't take its time to develop much of the characters of the world of the uh, circumstances the consequences it doesn't do any of that it it really 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 speeds ahead and uh, it's it, like I said it's incredibly rushed very very formulaic very very generic very paint by numbers superhero movie you know building up on the, the superhero movies we've been having been getting for the past uh, I don't know decade and a half now since since Iron Man basically I'll, I'll even go go ahead and before that since Batman begins like it really just you can tell where it's going every single step of the way and they, they threw in all the superhero cliches you can think of like and movie cliches as well like boy meets girl you know boy comes from a uh, bad family uh, bad family background I should say uh, but he's got a good heart you can you've got superhero material written all over him accidentally messes with the wrong people there's an evil corporation involved all this is in the trailer you don't really need me to spoil it for you uh accidentally gets his hands on, on powers uh struggles with powers learns to control powers a mentor father figure you know doesn't make it all the superhero cliches you can think of like even though the dialogue is very very generic at this point a very very generic villain um, you know the villain is basically an evil stronger version of the hero the lot the line you don't deserve this power is being mentioned you know where, where have I heard that one before the villain created the hero the hero created the villain all that stuff is the in like it like I said all the superhero cliches were thrown in there uh, and, and it even extends beyond the first half. So the first half, very few laughs. And again, very, very predictable. You can guess what's going to happen every single step of the way. It's not surprising. Like, everything you see happening, it's like, okay, I've seen this in that movie. I've seen this in this movie. I've seen this in the... I've seen this in Iron Man. I've seen this in Venom. I've seen this in Spider-Man. I've seen this in that movie. I've seen this and this and this and this. It's like... There's very little originality in the first half. Very, very important to point out. Very, very important to point out in the first half of the movie. But once the second half of the movie comes along, and you know, yeah, movies are more than just the first half. There, there's always, you know, the second act, the third act. After the, f after you know the generic things that are supposed to happen to every superhero origin story uh, that, that sets the hero on the path that they're supposed to be on after that happens the movie just shoots through the roof and it just becomes 
very very fun and enjoyable and you know what funny it's very funny it's got a lot of uh, good heart good feels great acting by all all the people involved and just you know the first half like i said it's a bit of a slug fast but once you get into the second half like you, you that is where you get to the stuff that you see that you haven't seen in any other superhero movie uh, so far and you know every, super, every superhero movie does that um, recently well, every good superhero movie I should, I, I should say does that it's like it's, not, not every movie follows the generic template that this movie does uh, a lot of movies do but uh, some of the better superhero movies don't follow the necessary the uh, the model, the template for a generic paint by number superhero movie like this movie does. The movie really does lean into the. Yep, it's a superhero origin story. Let's get through the. Let's get through all the steps we need to just to get into the where the action starts. And once the action ramps up, you're in for a very very fun ride and a very very emotional journey. Some really really great action scenes. The the fighting scenes. Are incredible and, and again th this is the stuff you haven't seen in a superhero movie before I mean it's very much Iron Man meets Venom and that's basically kind of the concept of Blue Beetle uh, written all over it like it's if you know anything about Blue Beetle at least the modern version the Hi Jaime Reyes version of Blue Beetle which is the, the version chosen for this movie it's basically Iron Man meets Venom it's like he's got this powerful nanotech exo suit from space but it's got a mind of its own and it talks to the the, the kid whoa was that a spoiler alert yeah sorry about that so yeah, it, it, he talks to the kid regularly just like in venom wants to kill people but the kid doesn't want to i mean you don't you don't need me to, to tell you this that's basically the, just like the character uh, description of Blue Beetle to a T but you know I think when put into the movie lens it, re it really really uh, comes out looking really great and uh, yeah like I said the fight, fight sequences the effects the dynamic of the of the superhero suit really really good the suit looks amazing and what really really helps to sell the movie is the supporting cast the family and the family and friends of the main character there's one character in particular that's other than the main character he's my favorite in the movie he's both uh, funny and he's like you know what the guy in the chair let's call it, let's call it that the, the again very paint by numbers very generic cliche the guy in the chair really really fun we're one of my favorite guy in the chairs in superhero movies and there's some really interesting and funny plot twists with the family that I felt were very very refreshing and haven't haven't seen that in any other superhero movie uh, thus far and I'm really glad that uh, it's, in, it's in this movie because uh, first of all again in the trailers no 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 spoilers there it's in, it's in the marketing this sort of flips the model on its head in a way that Oh yeah, the family knows that the kid is a superhero. Like, there's no secret identity nonsense, no nothing. Everyone knows who the superhero is, and that's a fresh take on a superhero, I think. And in this movie specifically, it works beautifully. It works perfectly, and not only the family are okay with the su with the kid being a superhero, they're some of the best superhero sidekicks. In a superhero movie in recent years and I can't reveal why you'll have to watch the movie to understand that but it uh, like I said if you, if you can get past the first half uh, the, you're in for a really really fun ride and a very very in, uh, interesting uh, journey with all these characters now I will say this there is one big major major negative about this movie the villains kind of suck like it feels like the main villain it just it just feels like she's from the 90s like a very 90s superhero villain very very underdeveloped very very one-dimensional 
nothing particularly interesting about her from the performance to the backstory or lack thereof and I just I don't know the villain really 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 hurts this movie uh, but you know what you it's one of those villains where you learn right from the start who they are and why they're the villains you hate them straight away and that's really all you need in a, in a, in a villain like you do you disagree with them you hate them because they're bad and that's it like feel like they're just bad to for the sake of being bad the villain and like the main henchman sidekick of the villain which you know it, it's some of the most weak weakest underdeveloped villains I've seen in a movie in a very 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 long time superhero or otherwise that's like the biggest uh, criticism for this movie that and the very very weak and rushed job uh, first half but I think there's a lot of really good stuff about this movie that really um, uh, really resonated with me and I, I actually really really ha uh, ended up enjoying it it's not one of the better movies I've seen this year but I did have a lot of fun with it just you know had to suffer through a very uh, boring villain and a rough yet enjoyable first half like once you accept that oh yeah you you know what's going what's coming and behind every corner in the first half and roll and roll with it you're good like you're, you're gonna have some fun with this movie there are two post credit scenes specifically the mid credit scene I think that they, they, they did it perfectly like you don't even have to wait a lot long for the mid credit scene. It's like the very short cast list scrolls up, then boom, uh, the uh, uh, the mid credit scene, which I will say you have to watch it if you're interested in this franchise and the future prospects that this franchise comes with. It's a very important post credit scene. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's a very important mid credit scene. Now there is a post credit scene as well after all the credits are done. That one I will say you can skip if you like. It's one of those post credit scenes that I consider to be in the category of the funny post credit scene. Where it doesn't have any implications about future movies or future projects or any of the sort. It's just a funny thing that sort of builds up on something that happened about halfway through the movie. And again, if you watch the movie, you'll know exactly what, what it is as soon as you see the first frame of the post credit scene. If you will, uh, stick around uh, for that. But again, you don't have to. Uh, it's not really important. It's just funny. And it's just a, a, a nice, fun way to bookend the movie. If you like. I enjoyed it. But that's it for Blue Beetle. Uh, I hope you found this uh, review uh enjoyable and informative this is the last movie i will be seeing in the theater for at least a month and a half now i think there aren't any other movies i planned on watching anytime soon but yeah i will be back here uh come november i think uh for uh, for more movies uh but yeah this is the last one i will be uh, doing for a while so uh thank you all for watching and i will see you guys in november goodbye Hi there! Thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time!